Have you ever sat in a meeting and heard somebody drop an acronym like GMP, GLP, GXP, GAMP, GVP, GDP, GCP, GXP, and just nodded along hoping nobody asked you what that is? We've all been there. Welcome to the world of GXP, where these are the rules that keep everything in pharma and medical devices from falling apart. Today we're breaking down the main GXPs. Next time somebody says we need to align to make sure that we meet GDP expectations, you know what they're talking about. Now, we can think of it like a party. GLP or good laboratory practices is in the corner making sure that the appetizers have been properly tested before anyone eats them. GCP or good clinical practices won't let anyone take a sip or eat anything until they sign a consent form and understand what they're consuming. GMP is watching the person who's making drinks like a hawk to make sure that every drink is poured exactly the same way. And GDP is at the corner making sure nobody leaves with the wrong coat or forgets their phone or keys. GVP is calling the next morning to make sure nobody got sick. And GAMP, or Good Automated Manufacturing Practices, is making sure that the music system doesn't glitch out and start playing two songs at once. That's GXP in a nutshell, and at its core, all of the GXPs exist to protect public health, whether it's manufacturing or testing in the lab or clinical trials or distribution or post-market safety. They're making sure that products are safe and effective and are produced to high quality and that there are adequate and effective systems behind those products to make sure that if something was to need to be reviewed or addressed that it is done so in a timely manner. So let's just jump through these quickly one by one. First, GMP is the one that most people have heard of and that's good manufacturing practices. GMP makes sure that every batch of drug or medical device is made consistently and meets quality standards outlined in an approved specification. There's no winging it in pharma manufacturing. Each product has to be the same every time. GMP covers facility and equipment controls, process validation, quality control, batch documentation. If GMP isn't followed, then what you end up getting is contaminated or adulterated product. Now, devices follow the QSR under 21 CFR 820, which was actually originally the GMP for devices but then evolved to be more focused on being a quality system. And that focus in introduced things like design controls and risk management and validation. And unlike drugs where GMP is focused on process consistency, the QSR makes sure that medical devices are actually designed properly from the start. Now, the FDA is planning to align the quality system regulations under 820 with ISO 13485, which is a global standard to make sure that the quality system requirements are streamlined worldwide. But before a drug or medical device even gets to manufacturing, it obviously has to go through preclinical research, which is where good laboratory practices come in. GLPs or good laboratory practices make sure that lab studies like tox tests, toxicology, pharmacokinetics, PK studies are conducted with integrity and that the data is traceable. And this prevents situations where companies cut corners or fake results or forget to report adverse findings. In 1981, the OECD established GLP principles to make sure that safety data generated in one country could be accepted by regulators in another country. The US and many other countries follow these principles, which means a study uh, done in a compliant lab can be used for regulatory approvals worldwide. And in technical circles, GLP is often confounded and confused with ISO 17025, but they're not exactly the same thing. ISO 17025 is for general lab testing, where GLP is for regulatory preclinical research. Once a drug moves past preclinical testing, we enter good clinical practices. This is about protecting human participants in clinical trials and making sure that the data collected is scientifically valid. Before GCP, clinical research was less controlled, leading to disasters like the thalidomide scandal in the 1960s, 
where thousands of babies were born with birth defects because the proper safety studies, the proper safety protocols weren't conducted and executed. GCP makes sure that participants are given informed consent, that trials are set up in accordance with ethical guidelines, and that the data is recorded accurately. If a company fails at GCP, their clinical trial data can be rejected, which in the world of pharma and medical devices is millions of dollars wasted and years of work down the drain. Let's say a drug or a device has passed all the testing and manufacturing checks. How do we make sure that the product actually gets to the user or the patient safely? And that's where good distribution practices come in. GDP makes sure that products are stored, transported, handled correctly so that they don't lose their effectiveness before reaching the pharmacy or the hospital or the patient, whoever the end user is. And this is especially critical for products like vaccines or biologics that have strict temperature controls. GDPs became really important during some product rollouts more recently, like the COVID vaccine, because improper cold chain management was something that could lead to doses being thrown away because they weren't stored at the right temperature. GDP also prevents counterfeit drugs from entering the supply chain through serialization and traceability requirements, tracking systems, those outlined in the DSCSA, which is the Drug Supply Chain Security Act in the US, and the Falsified Medicine Directive FMD in Europe. Even after a drug is on the market, your job as a person who works in pharma or medical devices isn't done. That's where GVP comes in. GVP stands for Good Pharmacovigilance Practices. GVP governs the monitoring of drugs for safety issues and adverse events. Just because a drug made it through clinical trials doesn't mean every possible risk is known. And the real world patient population is much more broad than a controlled study. Unexpected side effects can emerge and that's why regulatory agencies require companies to do continuous monitoring, adverse event reporting, safety reporting, and have risk management plans in place so that they're proactively collecting and assessing and reporting on that data. If serious safety concerns come up, companies may have to update labels, or issue warnings, pull a product from the market, or do a recall. The final one that I wanted to talk about is GAMP, or Good Automated Manufacturing Practices. And this one is a little bit different because it's not exactly about the drugs themselves, but about the systems used to make them. And GAMP makes sure that computerized systems in pharma manufacturing, which are things like automated batch records and electronic documentation and process controls are validated and function properly. And if those systems fail, they can lead to things like incorrect dosing, bad batches, or data integrity issues. And for this section, 21 CFR part 11 and the EU uh, Annex 11 set the rules for electronic uh, records and signatures, uh, making sure data is secure and traceable and tamper-proof and, and principles like Alcoa and Alcoa Plus come in. How do all of these GXPs fit together? GLP ensures that preclinical research is done with integrity and GCP makes sure that human trials are ethical and scientifically sound. GMP makes sure that once a product is approved, it's manufactured consistently and safely. GDP makes sure that distribution is controlled so that the product reaches the patient in good condition. GVP keeps an eye on the safety of the product even after the drug hits the market. And GAMP makes sure that automated systems supporting manufacturing are actually working. Without GLP, unsafe products could move into human trials. Without GCP or good clinical practices, patients could be exposed to unnecessary harms and risks. Without GMPs or good manufacturing practices, production could be inconsistent, which would lead to unsafe or ineffective drugs or devices. Without GDP or, or good distribution practices, those products could be damaged before they even reach the patient or the end user. Without GAMP, automated systems could fail, leading to huge data integrity issues or defective manufacturing. 
and without GVP or good pharmacovigilance practices, we wouldn't have a way to be able to monitor and respond to some of the real world safety issues that could come up once a product is on market. And each of these GXPs builds on the previous one and makes sure that the final product delivered to a patient is safe, effective to high quality, not just at the time of manufacturing, not just at the time of approval, but for the entire uh, life cycle. And regardless of whatever your function in pharma, biotech, or medical devices, understanding how these GXPs fit together is really critical to make sure that we're getting the right product into the patient hands in accordance with all of the appropriate requirements. So next time, if somebody throws around a GXP acronym, you'll know exactly what they're talking about. If you enjoyed this episode, please share, subscribe. It really helps out the channel. Thank you. And I will see you next time. Let's combinate.